People like to compare things. That's why you can see a lot of people power scaling things or making tier lists of quite literally everything. That's also the case for animals. I mean, Tier Zoo's channel revolves around that originally, and people really like it. One of the topics that people really like to talk about is the most dangerous thing. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is the most dangerous animal that currently exists? You know what? I don't want to waste your time, so let's just jump straight to the answer. Gather up, people. Pay attention, okay? So, the scientific answer to what is the most dangerous animal that currently exists is... None. There is no answer. Wait, hold up. Hold up, guys. Don't leave yet. At least listen to the explanation for several minutes. Alright, so, why is there no answer to this question? Well, that's because, for there to be an answer, you need to define danger first. Is danger an instance of peril? Or is danger a potential threat or risk? That's two completely different things when you think about it. If it is an instance, then we should only observe things that already happen. If it is a potential threat or risk, then we could do some hypothetical analysis. But even if we want to do the hypothetical analysis, we need to consider the variables. And now the question is, what kind of variables should we consider? What does it affect? How likely is it to happen? How devastating is it if it does happen? How frequently could it happen? Can we mitigate the happening? Can we remediate the damages? That's some of the variables. Let me give you an example. Great white shark. Most of you would agree that great white sharks are strong. If a great white shark attacks you, most of you would not survive. Me too, of course. But the question is, how could a great white shark attack you? If you just stay in your room, will you ever be attacked by a great white shark? Most likely not. Except if your room is in the sea somehow. Because, you know, they cannot traverse the land. So only those that go to the sea can be attacked by a great white shark. Well, perhaps there are some great white sharks in aquariums, but the same applies basically. Same goes with any animal with limited habitat and distribution. It's like Melenia in Elden Ring. Is she the most difficult boss fight in the base game? Probably yes. But just don't fight her. You can finish the game without ever fighting her. When Elden Ring first came out, some people might not even realize she exists because she resides in a secluded area. And that's exactly the same with many animals. Most people won't even enter their natural habitat. Most won't even have the chance if they want to. So there is technically no danger at all, basically. Now, let's just say there is a bird that lives in the urban area. That bird is very aggressive. They will target you and they will attack you every time you walk outside. The thing is, they would just notch at you and peck you a little. You won't even feel a thing. It's like a fluffy creature snuggles at you. And after some times, they would just stop completely. It might be inconvenient, of course, don't get me wrong. But if there are no real damages that can be done, is that bird really that dangerous? Now, let's talk about anteaters. Anteaters eat ants and termites. A lot of them basically every single day. Intuitively, ants would think anteaters are very dangerous. But what about other animals? What about humans? Do we think anteaters are dangerous? I mean, some of you might, but most of us? Not really, right? Now, let's try another approach. Locusts. Locusts is a famous example of agricultural pests. From all over the world, from different cultures, from various archaeological evidence, locusts had been devastating for human's life. It's mentioned in Mahabharata, it's one of the ten plagues of Egypt. The thing is, locusts don't really target animals. They just target plants. They are devastating to crops, but they don't cause fatality directly. 
Now think about it. How dangerous are they exactly compared to other animals? Now let's also think about it. Is a singular locust devastating? Not really, but they definitely are in swarms. If you think about that bird from earlier, is a singular bird dangerous? Not really, but what if, let's say, 10 of these birds attacks you? Then that could be dangerous. But the question is, is it fair? When you think of the elephant being dangerous, didn't you think of a singular elephant? And a great white shark too? You didn't think of a herd of elephants, right? I mean, that would be even more dangerous, of course. But why should you weigh in the whole herd? And why should we weigh in the locust as a swarm, not as an individual? In this case, there is an answer, of course, because locusts are often found in swarm. Except not really, but let's just say they are. Where do we draw the line? How many locusts should be considered equal to a singular elephant in our analysis? Or should we not do that in the first place? My point is, there are tons of variables to consider. And even if we somehow manage to determine all of those variables, how do we weigh each of them in the equation? Should all of them be equal? Or should some variables weigh more than the others? Now, even if we somehow manage to determine the correct ratio to this analysis, the question is, would we even be able to do the analysis? What? You're saying someone is gonna do an observation to every single animal species that currently exists, with however much variables? Those of you who are not a zoologist might say, yeah, why not? But those who are an actual zoologist, especially academics that actually do research, would probably just laugh. Why? Because it's redundant and a waste of resources. Takes too much time, takes too much money, and the result is not even important. I mean, okay, you get the answer. Oh, Funyarimpa is the most dangerous animal that currently exists. Cool. Now what? It's just a title. Practically, you don't need to know whether an animal is the most dangerous thing. You just need to know, is it dangerous enough? And that's why, just as I told you, there is no real answer to this question. And there will never be a true answer. But hey. That's also why this topic can be discussed by whoever. Forever. You can have your own answer. Everyone's idea can be proven irrational. But at the same time, no one have the correct answer. Because, again, there is no scientifically correct answer. Now, I would like to check out the answer to this question written in articles. I would like to also talk about several animals that are often brought up by people. And at the end, I would like to give my personal answer to the question, but before that... Now, I did a simple Google search and I check out the top 3 results and those 3 have the same answer. Those 3 are relatively new articles too, which is quite nice. The first one is an article written by Caris Matthews for Life Science, published in June 23rd, 2024. The second is written by Leoma Williams for Discover Wildlife, published in September 27th, 2024. This one specifies to humans though, so it's more targeted. The third is written by Thomas Ling, Toby Saunders, and George Edwards for BBC Science Focus, published in November 2nd, 2024. It's this month. Now, can you guess what's their answer to the question? It's mosquito, based on the mortality cost. To humans, that is. The argument is that there are a lot of mosquito-borne disease and those are deadly. Data shows that the rate of mortality caused by mosquitoes are around 725,000 to 1 million humans per year. Now, I don't know if that data is correct or not, but I would just assume it's correct. I still have three major problems with this argument. Can you guess what it is? The first one is the fact that mosquito as a whole is mentioned. Mosquito is a whole family, with hundreds of genera and perhaps thousands of species. I'm not sure about the exact number, but you should get what I mean. And the thing is, not 
all of those species are vectors for those disease. And even for the species that are indeed vectors, not all of the individuals are vectors. Only females are vectors. So, is that even fair to weigh in mosquito as a whole to the competition? I personally don't think so. Imagine you go to a boxing match or whatever, and your opponent is the entire member of another dojo, all in one fighting you. Is that even fair? Well, but it is what it is, I guess. The second problem is that this is very human-centric. I mean, sure, it's okay if you want to limit the target to human as a living being. One of the articles did specify after all. Even so, I think a creature that not only specifically dangerous to humans, but also other organisms and even the environment would be more fitting for the title. My personal answer to the question fits those criteria. But of course, it's just my personal opinion. Still, the main reason why I don't agree to this answer is because mosquito is just a factor. The disease itself is caused by different organisms, sometimes worms, sometimes protozoa, etc. The main cause for the large mortality number is malaria. Malaria is caused by some species of plasmodium. That's protozoa. If the mosquito does not carry plasmodium, then it's just mosquito. Females may suck your blood, it might be itchy, but that's basically it. You're blaming the wrong thing here. This really reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh. For example, when Hulky Fibrex was prevalent and Konami just banned every single good tuner instead of just fixing Hulky Fibrex. So yeah, I think that's enough explanation of why I don't agree to this answer. But it's fine if you don't agree with me, of course. Now, let's talk about some other famous answers by random people. The first are venomous snakes. There is a theory that says primates, including humans, of course, are especially alert toward snakes because it's one of the most dangerous threats that exists for us during our evolution. The reason why I don't agree to put venomous snakes as the most dangerous animals are, well, the first two are exactly the same as my argument against the mosquito. There are a lot of venomous snakes, so I don't think it's fair. And also, venom potency are not the same among targets. There are animals that resist snakes' venom. Still, my main reason is because most venomous snakes are not even aggressive. For them to attack you, you need to disturb them first. They tend to avoid you or simply does nothing and move on with their life if you don't bother them. Of course, there are cases where venomous snakes enter your house and you accidentally disturb them. Sometimes it happens when you sleep, which is unfortunate but it doesn't happen that often. Now, if you're talking about aggressive animals that could and will attack you, even if you keep your distances, there are black rhinos and common hippos. Those are very dangerous, of course. But the reason why I don't think they deserve the most dangerous title is because they are limited to Africa. Now, I am not against African, of course. I understand these two would be very dangerous if you live in Africa, but I personally think the title should be given to an animal that is more widespread, because they are dangerous to basically everyone, including to those that live in Africa. Now, what if we are basing it on extinction? Some people say domestic cats are major cause of extinction. Domestic cats did cause a lot of extinction especially for island birds or other small vertebrates. Still, I don't think cats can cause extinction of big animals, at least not directly. So I also don't think cats deserve that title. So, what exactly is my personal answer? Most of you could probably guess at this point. The apex, effective in coordination and working together. Symbol of ultimateness. Symbol of pride, symbol of strength, aspiring many tales, the so-called king, the so-called rightful ruler. Yep, it's human. Is that obvious? Now, I am not against human, and I am not just doom posting. I actually have some reasonable arguments. First of all, as a species, human is the most widespread animal in the world, 
that we know of at least. Most of you probably know how destructive humans can be. I don't need to explain that, right? We probably cause a lot more extinction than cats or any other animals. We actively reform this planet significantly. If you argue mosquito is the most dangerous animal because they carry disease, then hey, that's also the case for humans. We also carry disease. In fact, where do you think those mosquitoes get the pathogens? That's right, from infected humans. Most of the time at least. We also spread even more disease than what mosquitoes spread. Some are even more lethal than malaria. I'm sure I don't need to remind you what happened during 2020 to 2022, and that's just one disease. And should I remind you, mosquito is a whole family. Human is one species. Not only that, humans are the one that have the higher chance of being aggressive towards other humans. Out of hatred, out of greed, out of envy, etc. And even worse, the one that can easily infiltrate human population is, well, human. Now, some of you might argue, a singular human is not that dangerous. Well, sure. But then, why are people so afraid when a specific individual was elected as a leader? That's technically singular human. If it's not that dangerous, why are people so afraid? So, are you sure one singular human won't be that dangerous? But hey, like I said, there is no true answer. It's just my personal opinion. Forming and telling your personal answer could be a fun activity. It's kinda sad that these kinds of topics that should be just for fun often lead to heated arguments. That's why I'm making this video. I'm telling you, there will never be a true answer. No one can claim their answer is the true answer. If everyone could just talk about things like this for fun and understand that at the end of the day, every answer is just an opinion, which most likely is biased, then maybe everyone can just enjoy their day, socializing with each other. That's what I hope, at least. But yeah, that's all for now. Oh, by the way, next week is the one year anniversary of this channel. I want to do an Ask Me Anything session for next week. So if you are interested in that, check the latest post on my community tab. Anyway, enjoy your day.